I made an angled bridle joint. I'm making a table base with some crazy angled legs, and I figured the strongest way to join those angles would be a bridle joint. A bridle joint is one of the strongest joints out there because there is so much surface area for glue to hold the two pieces together. Making a bridle joint is super easy if your piece is straight. It gets a little bit more complicated when you have angles on them, but it's not too bad. Um, just a few jigs on the table saw and they were really great. So before we get started, huge thank you to this week's sponsors, WD-40 and Woodcraft. So let's get started. The first step to cutting the angled bridle joint is to actually cut the angles on your pieces. So there are many ways that you can do this. I'm going to use this Miter Express from Ingra, but you can use your miter saw, you can just use your regular miter gauge or anything you want. I'm going to do 30 degree angles here. So the first thing that I did was cut the first angle on my piece and then I am building off of a template so that I lined up my piece along my template, marked for my second cut, and then brought that line over to the top so that I could bring it on over to the sled so that I know exactly where the kerf is going to hit and it's going to cut exactly on my line. Then I adjusted the stop lock, and this isn't just a regular stop lock. There's kind of like a tongue and groove on it so an angle doesn't sneak up behind that stop. So after cutting the other end, I brought it over to my template to see if it was the right size. Once I saw that it was good, I continued cutting the rest of my pieces by first cutting an angle on one end and then flipping it over using the stop lock and cutting the angle on the other end. I'm cutting a lot of pieces here, so this really came in handy and this was so accurate, dead on. A bridle joint is kind of like an exposed mortise and tenon. So I measured the width of my piece and then divided that by three and then made two corresponding lines so that I would be left over with a mortise in the center. Then to mark the height, I took the piece that was going into it and just made a mark. Now you guys know that I love to make my own jigs and I made a tenoning jig a few years ago which would totally be fine for this application with some minor tweaks. There used to be a clamp on there, don't know where it went. But instead, Woodcraft sent me this amazing tenoning jig that has so many more features and it is so versatile. The first feature that I love about it is that you can change the back to any angle. You just loosen it up, set your piece in place and then adjust it so the bottom is flat and then lock it down. Before making any cuts though, you wanna set the blade height. So set it to right above the cut line so that you can sand away any excess after you glue it up. So all you need to do is clamp down the piece into the jig, unlock all the adjustments, and then move it on over to the center, the inside line of your cut line since this is the mortise first. Then you make one cut, and then you have to loosen all the adjustment knobs again, move the gross adjustment to, again, the inside, and you could even make some minor adjustments with the minor adjustment knob to get the perfect fit, and you make the second cut. So I thought that I had a really good idea to make a perfect fitting joint using this tenoning jig. So let me walk you through my thought process. So I cut a piece of scrap that's exactly the blade thickness that I am using. And after making a first cut, I think this is the mortise piece, I could then remove this piece and then when I'm going to cut the mating piece that's supposed to fit into there, I would use this blade thickness scrap and put it in between the piece. And that way the piece is now moved over exactly the blade thickness. So it should be the perfect fitting joint. In theory, this sounds really great, right? So I actually cut, I think four of these before I gave up. So. I don't know if some of them were too thin, some of them were too thick. I don't have enough time. I just got to get this project going. But I do think that this could be a really good idea if I could perfect the thickness on this scrap to put in between here. So um, moving on, I'm just going to use some referential measurements. I'm going to line up the first piece onto the second piece, make some marks, and then cut base off of that. So all right, moving on. But before doing that, I just need to hog out the middle of the mortise. I did this by adjusting the minor adjustment knob and just slowly hogging away at the middle. Note, I'm using a flat bottom blade for a super clean cut. Once cleaned up, I took the mortise piece over to the tenon piece and I just lined it up and made some marks for the cut. Now, it's basically the same exact process as before, except this time I'm going to make the cuts on the outside of the lines. So using that minor adjustment knob to dial in that fit, was really great. So I just made one cut 
and then repeated the same process on the other side to make the second cut. You can clear up the waste by taking multiple passes with the tenoning jig, or you could just do two passes with your miter gauge. So set the blade height to just below the tenon, and the angle should be the same angle as you cut your original angles. And just cut away at the cheeks, uh, right at the shoulder line, and then flip the fence around so that you can make the second pass, and now your tenon is done. Now let's see how it fits. When I put the two pieces together, they slip right into place and they don't fall apart when I let go. So I say that is a perfect fit. Now before gluing it up, let me take a moment to tell you about this week's sponsor, WD-40. The ball catch on my pantry door was stuck and I could not open the door. So I decided to try out some WD-40 Easy Reach. It has a flexible straw that stays in place so it's easy for those hard to reach areas. I just did a quick couple of sprays and the door opened with ease. The Easy Reach was helpful with opening the door and it will prevent it from sticking in the future. So huge thank you, WD-40. When gluing up this joint, you realize how strong it really is. There is so much long grain surface area for the two pieces to stick together. You put some glue on the tenon. I also put some inside the mortise and then you push it into place. Ideally, you should have some clamps pushing them together towards the center. But really the most important part is really to clamp them and squeeze them together. And I used some scraps that were cut off from making the tenon to prevent any marks. And I wiped off any excess glue on the inside because that would be hard to clean up later. All right, so the joint is clamped up and I'm very happy with how it all fit. Ideally, I would have put another clamp going this way and another clamp going that way to pull everything tight together. I would make some sort of jig with some angles on it to do that, just didn't have time for this video, but that's what I will do for my project. So the joints are just a little bit proud because I had the table saw blade just set a little bit higher than my cut line and that's exactly what I wanted. So just after a quick sanding, the joint will be perfectly flush and it will be good to go. So thank you guys again so much for watching and thanks again to this week's sponsors, WD-40 and Woodcraft. Check out all their links below and I will see you on the next project.